A little more than a month after rapper takeoff was shot and killed outside a Houston bowling alley, police have made an arrest. 33 year old Patrick Xavier Clark has been charged with murder. ABC's Morgan Norwood has the latest on the investigation. New developments in the shooting death of hip hop star Takeoff of the Atlanta rap group Migos. Houston police announcing they've arrested 33 year old Patrick Clark and charged him with murder. Made a promise that we would get the individuals or the individual that's responsible uh, for the murder of takeoff in custody. The break comes just days after Houston police arrested 22 year old Cameron Joshua on gun charges, accused of illegally having a gun where takeoff was killed. Color, gun shots, and people screaming. Video obtained by TMZ shows the argument that led up to the shooting, followed by the sound of gunfire and people running. There was a lucrative dice game argument that happened afterwards outside the bowling alley which led to the shooting. Takeoff was not involved in playing in the dice game. He was not involved in the argument that happened outside. He was not armed. He was an innocent bystander. Takeoff was often praised for his peaceful demeanor. He formed the rap group Migos in 2008 with relatives Quavo and Offset. Takeoff was laid to rest in Atlanta last month. Hundreds of fans gathering outside in the pouring rain to celebrate his musical legacy. We lost a good man. Everybody, the hundreds of people that I, I talked to uh, spoke on what a great individual he was. Police say they can't rule out the possibility of a second suspect, adding that they desperately want to talk with anyone who was there that night. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. Around America, right-wing conspiracy theorist Alex Jones filing for personal Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Jones estimates his assets are worth between one to ten million dollars. His liabilities are between one to ten billion. The Infowars host primary company, Free Speech Systems, filed for bankruptcy protection back in July. The personal filing comes after Jones lost a bid in Texas to reduce the nearly fifty million dollar damages awarded by a ju uh, by a jury earlier this year over his false claims about the Sandy Hook Elementary School massacre. Jones also owes $1.4 billion in a separate Connecticut case brought by eight families of Sandy Hook victims and a first responder. The relatively new 988 suicide hotline down for 13 hours, and now the Department of Health and Human Services is investigating. In fact, not only was the 988 suicide and crisis lifeline offline, the outage also disrupted a separate substance abuse and mental health services helpline. Even though the 988 chat and text options were still working, HHS called the disruption unacceptable. The hotline launched over the summer amid concerns that call centers were overwhelmed. In the first month it was available, crisis calls increased 45 percent compared to the previous year. Some good news for people out there looking for a job. The U.S. economy added 263,000 jobs last month, according to data released from the Labor Department Friday morning. The unemployment rate held steady at 3.7 percent. The latest jobs numbers come amid Fed attempts to cool the economy in hopes of tempering decades-high inflation. Model Haley Bieber making that announcement this week that she is suffering from a large cyst in her ovary. 10 out of every 100 women have ovarian cysts, but they're usually non-cancerous and they rarely cause problems. That said, they are painful. Mandy Gaither with when it is time to see the doctor. On Instagram, Haley Bieber posted this picture for her followers, saying she has a cyst on her ovary that's the size of an apple, calling it painful and achy. A lot of women get very frightened when they hear they have a cyst, and the majority of them are really inconsequential. Cleveland Clinic OBGYN Dr. Selena Zanotti says the vast majority of ovarian cysts will go away on their own without medical care. Cysts are only problematic if they're causing symptoms, and symptoms might be persistent pain or severe pain, um, or if there you know, are concerns that it may be a cancer or maybe a precancerous kind of tumor. You should seek immediate medical care if there are signs of ovarian torsion or twisting of the ovary. Symptoms include sudden severe abdominal pain accompanied by vomiting or fever, feeling lightheaded or faint and breathing rapidly, and cold, clammy skin. You want to take care of that 
emergently because we want to make sure we can do everything we can to save a woman's ovary. Other reasons to see a doctor. If menstrual periods change, the abdominal pain doesn't go away or your abdomen becomes enlarged or swollen. You have trouble urinating or emptying your bladder. You have pain during intercourse. You have feelings of fullness, pressure, or discomfort in your abdomen. You lose weight for no apparent reason or you feel generally ill. If a woman is starting to develop a lot of persistent symptoms, that's when we might look at something like surgery to remove the cyst. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. We've had to deal with a lot of new things in the last few months, including getting new words for new trends like shrinkflation. Well, here's a new one, tipflation. What it is and how to avoid it, next. You've heard of shrinkflation and greedflation before. Here's another one to add to your vocabulary. Tipflation. Shoppers report seeing more and more tip requests in growingly unusual places. As Isabel Rosales reports, you might not even be able to escape it while holiday shopping from your own home. I actually prefer not to call it tipflation, but a tipping invasion. It's the unwelcome shopping surprise that has social media buzzing. 18% gratuity is already included in the bill. Girl, it's water. Tips, a staple of the service industry now extending far beyond. In the drive through and they've been asking for a tip. On TikTok, you'll quickly find folks aren't too pleased about it. Ordering it online myself. It says, would you like to add a tip at the bottom? A tip? For what? That's a little too crazy for me, and I refuse. So what's the deal? The wage moving I see becoming more widespread. Professor Depayan Biswas has studied tipping for a decade. He says this new tipping trend started with the boom of digital kiosks. Then the pandemic plus inflation. We added fuel to that fire. More businesses allowing tips to make jobs more lucrative at your expense. That's my biggest worry, that it might actually affect the industry where it really matters the most. This is Mr. Manners. The very concept of a tip is that we are rewarding a service employee who is being paid less than minimum wage. Thomas Farley has a tip without hesitation list, and just three people make the cut. Servers, bartenders, and washroom attendants. I really wonder, where's the line? It has accelerated beyond all of our wildest nightmares. To avoid tipping, pay cash. But if plastic is a must. You need to own your position. You do not need to feel guilty about it. There's power in saying no. Now that's worth a tip. I'm Isabel Rosales reporting. We're going to take a look outside with live cam. Beautiful night out there in some ways because there's a great football game going on at the Alamo Dome. But we're also watching for misty, murky weather to continue. It's a cloud. Yeah, and it's starting to settle in, you know, once you lose that sunlight in the daytime and once it gets to evening, the humidity and everything really causes that fog and drizzle to really start to set in. It's not as bad right now as it was this time yesterday, but anticipate the visibility to quickly drop. You look at the visibility now, it's five miles at the airport, down from 10, and it's going to continue to drop probably under a mile for visibility later on tonight. But it's the kind of action that doesn't really drop any precipitation. It's just drizzle and maybe a sprinkle, but nothing that you'll actually see on the radar screen. We'll talk more about this, how long it's going to last, and of course, a weak cold front that hits tomorrow, what kind of impact that's going to have and how you're going to feel it in just a bit. The United States Air Force unveiling its newest stealth bomber aircraft. It is the B-21, named in honor of an airman or the airman who carried out the surprise World War II Doolittle raid. The aircraft can carry both nuclear and conventional weapons. It's the first time in more than 30 years that a new U.S. bomber has been publicly unveiled since the B-2 Spirit was presented in 1988. It comes with a $692 million price for each aircraft, but that includes training materials, support equipment, and other components. The Air Force plans to buy at least 100 of them. The release of the new bomber comes amid heightened tensions between the U.S. and both China and Russia. If you want your fast food faster, McDonald's says it is working on it. The hamburger chain is testing out a new restaurant concept. There we go. It offers things like a food conveyor belt and a pickup area for deliveries. It's a drive through of the future in Fort Worth. It's smaller than most McDonald's, specifically designed only for to-go orders. 
There are kiosks replacing takeout orders and parking spots dedicated for mobile app users and curbside pickup. Industry drive through times are 45 seconds or slower on average for 2022 compared to pre-pandemic days. The hope is the design concept will help the restaurant pick up the pace and drive new burger business. Now, scientists are pretty excited about a new discovery. It is on Saturn's largest moon. I'm not doing too good at this. There we go. No? Nope. There you go. You just got to have the right touch. I needed his help. You got to have the right touch. The James Webb Space Telescope spotting clouds on Titan, hiding behind the moon's thick, hazy atmosphere. It's a discovery that's a long time in coming. Scientists already knew Titan has Earth-like liquid bodies on its surface made on ethane and methane. Now they have confirmed that the liquid can form clouds in the sky and cause rain. Researchers are planning to observe Titan's weather patterns again in June. All right, we are taking a look outside. Every time we look at the at live cam, it looks different because it, it's constant murky, chases. it's constant clear, changes. it's always cloudy though. That's one thing that is constant. Uh, yes, we're dealing with the low clouds. They're going to stay in place all weekend long. It's going to be a gray weekend and periodically a little damp, especially tonight and tomorrow morning. Take a look at our headlines here. Saturday morning, drizzle. A few sprinkles, of course, that's already starting tonight and it's going to get even worse pretty quickly here over the next hour or two. Saturday afternoon and evening, low humidity and temperatures not really changing all day. They'll pretty much hold steady right around 60, give or few, give or take a few degrees throughout the day. So Saturday evening plans of any holiday parties or anything going on, you'll be fine. It'll be cloudy and a little on the cool side, but no drizzle redeveloping. That's the nice thing. Sunday, low humidity, but cloudy and cool. Let's talk temperatures. Let's get right into this weak cold front that's headed our way. Well, weak for us. It's packing a punch up to the north. You look behind it, we've got temperatures in the 20s right now. Omaha, North Platte, 20s, even Minneapolis, Bismarck, North Dakota at four degrees above zero right now. That's it. And out ahead of it, we've got some 60s and 70s. That's where we are. The core of the cold air is going to stay off to the north. For us, we're just going to get clipped by this front, and it's going to be a pretty shallow front as well and not have a huge impact on our temperatures. So 63. Just about everywhere across Bear County and San Antonio, you even get up to Canyon Lake 65, Comfort 64, Hondo and Divine 63 degrees. We're going to pretty much hold steady all night. 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, we're at 62. By noon, and we'll drop to about 59 with that cold front. And then we're right around 60 all afternoon and evening tomorrow. So pretty much a straight line when it comes to temperatures throughout the day tomorrow, despite a cold front passage, but you will notice the drop in humidity by the noon hour tomorrow. As for highs on Sunday, still right near 60. I think about 61 the high temperature next week. That's when we warm up again back above average by a good 10 degrees above average well into the 70s and next week is going to be more consistent than what we've had lately because we don't have any big cold fronts headed our way and temperatures are going to be on the upswing a bit. Let's talk about precipitation and this pattern that's going to be taking shape and giving us this kind of weather. First of all, that cold front off to the north. Notice no showers along that front. I'm not expecting any. We'll have the drizzle and sprinkles and dampness tonight through tomorrow morning, but no meaningful real rain. Yeah, a few hundredths of an inch from the drizzle. That's about it, but no drought denting rain, nothing meaningful. Big Blue H, upper level high. It's over the Gulf of Mexico, actually the western Gulf of Mexico. It's getting close to us. It's going to be drifting around here near Texas and Mexico and over the Gulf of Mexico through the weekend and especially into next week. And that's going to prevent any big disturbances from dropping in. Remember, this acts like a blocking mechanism and it's just going to give us more consistent weather day to day. However, there will be some hiccups in that. Let's talk about our future cast. Low clouds, they'll remain in place. Damp, foggy, drizzly, visibility under a mile at times later tonight and first thing Saturday morning. So if you like to take that long jog or bike ride, you will have wet trails. You'll have wet sidewalks, wet roadways Saturday morning. The afternoon will be better because the cold front's going to move in. We'll still have clouds, but it'll sweep away the drizzle. Few sprinkles. That's about it. That's about all we'll have here over the next few days. That's just a 20% chance of those sprinkles Saturday and Sunday. Otherwise, rain chances not looking good. Cloudy throughout the day tomorrow, 62 at 7 a.m. By 4 p.m., 
60 degrees. Sunday we start at 51 and then make it only to 61 gray throughout the weekend. Next week we fall back into the pattern of daily morning fog and drizzle. So daily dampness starting Monday lasting all week, but mornings back in the 60s and afternoons in the 70s and noticeable humidity will be back next week as well. Thank you, Adam. So be careful on the roadways next week in the morning. In case you missed it is next. Welcome back. Here's today's in case you missed it. It's Friday, the 2nd of December. He wanted to clean the streets of Laredo. That's what a former Border Patrol supervisor tells investigators after he was arrested for the murders of four women. Juan David Ortiz is on trial for capital murder. The playing of the interrogation video started back on Wednesday, but what was shown this morning may have a major impact on the jury. The jury's finally hearing Ortiz confess to the murder and then his rationalization on why he did it. Ortiz describes in detail how he killed Melissa Ramirez, Claudine Luera, Gisela Cantu, and then a fourth victim police didn't even know about, Janelle Ortiz. <laughs> Ortiz, a former Border Patrol Intel supervisor, is facing up to life in prison without parole if found guilty. It's being touted as a potential vaccine that stops side effects of fentanyl. Researchers at the University of Houston say it could be a powerful and life-saving tool against the opioid epidemic. And this week, Texas Governor Greg Abbott touring the research lab at U of H where the possible vaccine is being developed. Scientists at the university initially announcing its discovery last month, they say their vaccine stops fentanyl from getting into the brain. The lead researcher on the project says he designed it for people who are addicted to fentanyl who want to quit using it. All right, how many times have you seen this in South Texas? That's a buck, antlers, and a whole tangled mess of Christmas lights. So you just kind of stare and go, hey, somebody help me. That's a buck in Oregon. It got the decorations stuck in his antlers. Homeowner captured the buck on video walking through her yard. Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife officers darted the buck so the lights could be removed. The animal not hurt. Fog drizzle and dampness taking over. Get ready for wet roadways again very quickly this evening. And visibility down to under four miles, probably by eight, nine o'clock. There's our future cast starting at nine o'clock. Now look what happens as we get after midnight. Uh, visibility under a mile for all of us in around Bear County, Hill Country, and even surrounding areas. And I don't think we'll really shake free of the drizzle until about 9 or 10 a.m. on Saturday. As for the weekend, cloudy near 60 all day tomorrow. Sunday, lower humidity, still cloudy right near 60 for a high the next week, 70s. Thank you, Adam. And we want to remind you that coming up in just a few seconds, our special on Uvalde. Six